In the previous video of this series, you saw how a matrix can be used to transform a vector in two-dimensional space. In this video, you'll see how it's done in three dimensions. Let's begin with a brief recap. Transforming vectors with matrices is particularly important for animated computer graphics, because virtual worlds are made up of models. Each model is made up of thousands of tiny primitive shapes, like this triangle, and each corner of each triangle is a point in space encoded as a vector. Interactive computer games rely on being able to transform all of the vectors that make up each model in the same way and all at once, so that the whole model can be scaled, rotated and moved very quickly, and in real time. In the previous video, you also met three different types of transformation matrix that can be applied to the vectors in a 2D model. Translate, Scale and Rotate. The values that you see in red will depend on how much you want to translate, scale or rotate. A transformation is applied to a vector through multiplication. You saw that in order to translate a vector, it was necessary to use a 3x3 three three matrix, although scaling and rotation could be achieved with 2x2 two two matrices. However, to allow any combination of transformation matrices to be multiplied together, so that a single matrix could encode multiple transformations, it was necessary to use 3x3 three three matrices for scaling and rotation as well. Multiplying a 3x3 three three transformation matrix by a vector in two-dimensional space requires that the vector has a third component, the number 1, so that the rules of matrix multiplication can be obeyed. Once the desired transformation matrix has been composed by multiplying individual transformation matrices together, it can be applied to each and every vertex in the model simultaneously. Well, that's how it's done in two dimensions, so what about three? When a model is free to move in any of three dimensions, it can be translated back and forth in the X dimension the Y dimension, and now the Z dimension as well. This, of course, is much more like the real world that we live in. Scaling can be applied in different dimensions too, allowing a model to be enlarged, shrunk and distorted. And now, with three dimensions, rotation can happen in three different ways. The model can be rotated around the Z axis, the Y axis, or the x-axis. Working in three dimensions requires a new set of transformation matrices. This is how a three-dimensional vertex is encoded as a vector. It now includes x, y and z components, and an extra component, a number one, to allow it to be translated by means of matrix multiplication. And here is the 3D translation matrix. Notice that it's a 4x4 matrix now. Other than that, the 3D translation matrix isn't that much different from a 2D translation matrix. It includes an extra row to cater for the Z dimension, and a fourth row and column to allow the translation to be applied using multiplication rather than addition, for the same reason that was mentioned in the previous video. The scaling matrix isn't that much different either. The value at row 3, column 3 specifies a scaling factor in the Z dimension, and the fourth row and column serve only to allow this matrix to be combined with other 4x4 matrices through multiplication. We have three separate rotation matrices. The Z rotation matrix is very similar to the 2D rotation matrix. The values that control the amount of rotation are all situated in the top left corner. You might expect this because in two dimensions only the x and y coordinates of a vector are changed by rotation. In three dimensions, rotation around the z-axis has no effect on the z-coordinate of the vector either. Look at the y-rotation matrix and you can see that the values in the second row remain fixed 
for any amount of rotation around the y-axis. As you would expect, rotation around the y-axis leaves the y-coordinate of a vector unchanged. The x-rotation matrix leaves the x-value of any vector unchanged. The top row of values in this matrix are therefore fixed. So let's see some of these transformations in action, and the calculations required to perform them. Here's a primitive shape in three-dimensional space. The x-axis is coloured red, the y-axis is green, and the z-axis is blue. The three vertices in this model are encoded as vectors and share the same origin. Suppose we want to rotate each vertex in the model through 90 degrees around the x-axis, and we want to rotate through 45 degrees around the y-axis, and we want to translate each vector three units in the y-direction and four units in the z-direction. We'll focus on just one vertex for now, this one. Its original coordinates are x equals 1.22, y equals 0, and z equals 1.97. This is an x-rotation matrix for an angle of 90 degrees. When applied to the current coordinates, we get its new position after the first rotation. This is the y-rotation matrix for an angle of 45 degrees. When this matrix is applied to the current coordinates of the vertex, we get its new position after the second rotation. And this is the translation matrix we need to move the vertex 3 in the y direction and 4 in the z direction. When applied to the current coordinates, we have the final position of the vertex. To perform these transformations all at once, we can multiply the matrices together in reverse order. First, multiply the translation matrix by the Y rotation matrix. Remember, the order of operations is important. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. Then, multiply these by the X rotation matrix. You can see that when the composed transformation matrix is multiplied by the original vector, we will get the same final position of the vertex. So that's how you transform one vertex. But remember, that vertex is only one of three in a primitive shape. And that primitive shape is one of many in a model. So to transform the model, we apply exactly the same calculation to every vertex in the model. A three-dimensional world will consist of many separate models, each with its own local coordinate system, and all within the world's global coordinate system. This allows models to be transformed individually or together. For example, the wheels on this car are rotating within their own local coordinate systems, but are being translated globally. All of this apparent movement is down to transformation matrices. The transformation matrix is just one, albeit very important, aspect of the so-called graphics pipeline. Vectors are also used to encode the orientation of the vertices and the orientation of the faces of the primitive shapes in a model. Not to mention information about the direction and intensity of any light source. This information is used to shade a model once colours and textures have been applied. A 3D model then has to be projected onto a two-dimensional plane, so it can be displayed on a flat screen. All of these operations depend on matrix vector multiplication.